Okay. Time to leave them in peace. So, there's something that I want to have a chat about today. It's early morning here, it's about 7.30 in the bush here. Just came to see the howlers. So those howlers, which I love, um, they're scary. They make a lot of noise. They sound much bigger than they actually are. Uh, especially when a whole bunch of them get going. Um, but they're... They're scary. But they're, they're harmless. They wouldn't hurt you, I don't think. Uh, except maybe under special circumstances if you're sort of outnumbered and had food. I don't know, really, but... Generally, they're not a threat. But there are things that... will hurt you, but aren't scary. Um, especially with this, for hikers, it's happened again recently, last month actually, August 2017, and my hiker died on a guided hike, again with multiple hikers, with a recognised group here, uh, I was just over 50 years old, anyway. Some of my regular subscribers will remember a video that I did. It's probably got more views than anything else on my channel. Called Peeing in the Bush Will Kill You. Um, and it was about a, a lady named Mrs. Largay. Or also known as the Inchworm that got lost on the Appalachian Trail. Very sad case. Uh, if you want to check it out then I'll leave the link below. So this is a kind of a follow-up to that because it's happened again here. We've we've had a hiker die, this time not a solo hiker like Miss Largay, but um, as part of a guided group. And I think it really was only a matter of time because you're always hearing about folks getting lost as part of a guided group, and I just find it um, I find it incredible. That, that can happen but uh, anyway it did gentleman mid 50s part of a hiking group i think his son was also part of the group um it was a you know it was a relatively difficult it was a challenging hike it was up to the arepo dam i think here a hike in the northern range what they call the northern range mountains um and he he became several, as with all of these things, there's a kind of a quicker moving group that want to eat it up the front, there's a group at the back that kind of aren't keeping up, and those in the middle. Anyway, he complained of a knee problem, just obviously not having a good time. There were two guides, apparently, um, and last he was seen is at, at 2 o'clock, I think, 2 p.m., and then when they did the head count at 4 p.m., he was missing. They mobilized the search. They didn't find him for three days. And when they found him, he was dead. Um, it looks like he'd fallen off of a precipice 600 feet down the bottom of a, um, a ravine. So he'd kind of, we don't know, tripped off the uh, trail. And the autopsy showed that he's, he broke his neck in the fall. So obviously, that's a trouble. That happened last uh, last month, that's August. I've waited till now to do a, a video about it because I was waiting for the results of the autopsy to be published. And they've ruled out uh, foul play. And I suspect that he maybe was suffering from heat exhaustion or perhaps dehydration even. Um, wasn't feeling quite right. Not... Uh, not able to look after himself operating at 100% and missed his footing and over the side of course that's conjecture but it's the most likely uh, thing but here's the thing it um, it seems to happen a lot and it's always with 
groups, hiking groups, which you would think would be the safest place and the safest way to do that. Well, I think people are lulled into a false sense of security with hiking groups, and also I think that those that join hiking groups aren't generally hikers. This gentleman had hiked before. He was a, you know, an experienced hiker. I think generally you get people that, that are going on and say, oh, I want to try that, a bit of family fun, they take the whole family. And I think because it's a group setting, the, the hazards are masked a bit. It's, you know, the dangers aren't immediately obvious. And also, these folks are putting their safety in the hands of the guys that are running it. Well, I don't consider myself an expert by any means. But uh, this is just a few points, really, because, you know, like the last situation, it troubles me. And I th thought I'd just put a few things out there because it may help um, folks that are thinking about hiking. They're not necessarily experienced. I mean, most of my subscribers are all well-versed in the, the routine for the outdoors and certainly go prepared. And a lot of them are solo hikers, or at least low numbers. And I'm not really talking about that either. This is more about the group hike kind of scenario. Uh, yeah, different day, same topic. That behind me, you can see that low cloud, it's a very gloomy day here. You see the cloud hanging over the ridge there. This is actually the bottom side of Maria, Hurricane Maria. It's so wide, even we're affected by it down here in Trinidad. It passed over um, Dominica last night and destroyed the place. I saw a Facebook post by the Prime Minister of Dominica and he said the roof of his house was gone and that they are destroyed. Anyway, hiking groups, um, people that organise these hikes, there's, there's a few basics that you should ensure that they're covering if you're going to go with these guys on a hike. Um, not least of which is they're going to have adequate guides for the group. They want to cram in as many numbers as they can because that's more money. But um, you can't have 50, 30 people, 10 people going with one guide. Well, maybe 10. Maybe you get away with 10 if he was diligent. Um, so there should be two, a minimum of two guides for, for, for large groups. One at the front, one at the back. Ask them if they carry first aid equipment communication equipment, how do they communicate with each other, walkie talkies, could be cell phone if, you've got, uh, if you're in range. Stay within your fitness level, don't sign up for a challenging hike if you've never hiked before or if you've got any kind of problems, joint problems, when I say fitness it's not only you know, cardiovascular, it's joint problems, anything like that because they a challenging hike will expose all those weak points. Be sure to ask them what their experience level is with guiding hikes. Um, they should do a head count. There should be a head count before you kick off and a head count but when you get back. Certainly a head count at a turnaround point. And if they're any good, there should be waypoints where they can stop. Um, allow the group to reform, do a head count and move on again if it's an extended hike. Um, and those are just those are just very basic safety points. Obviously leaving information with people as to how many there are and where they're headed and when they're expected back um, are, all, are also all you know essential points that um, guiding organisation should take into account but there are a few things to look for if you're you know perhaps not uh, an experienced hiker but you're thinking about going on one of these trips carry enough water you get people showing up for hikes here in their shorts and their sneakers and a one litre bottle of water and think they're good to go and that's nowhere near enough water. I carry a minimum of three litres of water and that's just really for a stroll out here because of the heat and the humidity. 
minimum you want to take is one of the two litre big bottles and of course they're you know cumbersome to carry that's why people go for the small ones so really you need a sack some sort of day sack a bag so you can jam some water in there so you take what you need plus a little bit spare carry enough water they should also have drinks 